today's episode, we're going to talk about texture settings and compression formats. And we're going to go over this information because it's really important that you get these settings correct so that you can get just the right trade-off between quality and performance for your Unreal project or your game. So we're going to start off by taking a look at this shader. We, we were going over uh, bump offset mapping in the previous video. And so we're going to use these same textures as our examples as we talk about the texture settings and compression. So let's first look at the diffuse texture that we're passing in for our cobblestones material here. Here is our cobblestones diffuse texture. And you can see over here on the right hand side, there's this little box that says details. And this is really helpful. It provides a lot of important information. So here it says when you imported the texture, it was 2K by 2K. That will tell you the size of the original texture that you created. And then in the game or in the engine, it's also 2K by 2K. So it hasn't been reduced. You haven't told it to skip high MIP levels. So it's 2K by 2K. Uh, same thing with in the game. Now this next item here is really important. This, this is the amount of texture memory that your texture is using. So at my current compression settings, my 2K texture is taking just over two megabytes or almost three megabytes of memory. And it does not have an alpha channel. And my texture is marked to be streamed. And what that means is as the character moves around in the game, if an object with this texture on it uh, comes close to the character, the texture will be dynamically loaded and streamed in. And then if that object goes far enough away or off screen, the texture will be streamed out or removed from, from memory. That's the most efficient way of managing the texture memory. And that means that the game engine is going to manage memory for you and stream things in when they're needed and then get rid of them when they're not needed. This next item is the texture compression format that's being used. This is DXT1. Uh, that's one of the most efficient compression formats. And then there's node load bias and it's saying there are 12 MIP maps. Um, when you import a texture into the Unreal Engine, it creates a MIP map chain. And what that means is, let's say your texture is 2K like this one. It's going to make a copy of the texture that's 1K and another copy that's 512 and another copy that's 256 and it's going to keep making smaller copies like that until it gets all the way down to 4x4 four four. and each of those copies is called a MIP and depending on how close or far away from the camera you're looking at the object or how straight on or at an oblique angle you're looking at the object it's going to choose which MIP level to sample so sometimes it'll be sampling the full 2K image, or if the object's further away or seen at an angle, it's going to uh, load in and sample a lower MIP level to save performance and memory. So this particular texture has uh, 12 MIPs of full chain. All right, let's move on and talk about our compression settings. This is a diffuse texture, and here I've checked this box that says Compress Without Alpha. And what that's going to do is, if I import a texture that has four channels, red, green, blue, and alpha, it's going to ignore that alpha channel, and it's going to compress things as if the alpha channel didn't exist, even if I imported a texture that has an alpha. So if you know that your texture is only ever going to have three channels, red, green, and blue, you should check this compress without alpha just in case you accidentally saved it as a 32-bit image or an image with a fourth channel so that it will ignore that fourth channel. Next we're going to talk about compression settings and like I said DXT1 is the most efficient compression setting you can use. So if you have a texture with three channels like this cobblestone texture here and you set it to DXT1 an uncompressed image will be eight times the size in memory as a compressed image. So DXT1 has an eight to one compression ratio, which is amazingly uh, efficient. 
It does the compression by splitting up your texture into 4x4 pixel blocks and then storing the full value for, for two of the, uh, like the most extreme pixels in that block of 16. And then all of the other pixels are mapped somewhere along a linear line between uh, one pixel and another pixel. Um, there are a lot of videos and, and other places where you can find more information, but that's the gist of it. It's basically storing the full value for two of those 16 pixels and then mapping all the rest of the pixels in a linear line uh, between the two. And in that way, it's able to get an 8 to 1 compression ratio, which is, which is great. Now, in some cases, it does uh, introduce compression artifacts. And so sometimes you may need to switch to a different uh, compression scheme if, if your texture is getting crunched in a way that you don't like. Um, so let's take a look at some of the other compression settings. Here is a normal map. And normal maps use DXT5 or BC5 on DirectX 11. And DXT5 is a 4 to 1 compression ratio. And if you select normal map here, it's going to apply some compression settings that are very specifically tailored to make normal maps look as good as possible. So whenever you're using a normal map, you should always pick normal map DXT5 here. That's definitely the best setting. The next setting that I'm going to talk about is masks. So if you have, actually, I have a bunch of textures up here. So here's a normal map, for example, and you can see it's selected uh, normal map DXT5 uh, because I'm storing normal data. Here I have my ASMR texture, which is for uh, ambient occlusion, specular, metalness, and roughness. So I have four different masks in the four channels of this texture. Uh, we can just take a look at them here really quick. So I'll turn off everything but the first channel. And you can see here I have my uh, here I have my ambient occlusion, and then in the next channel I have um, my specular mask, and then I have my metal in the blue, which is just completely black, and then I have my roughness in the alpha, which which looks like this. And this particular texture, I, you know, when I turn on all the channels, it looks kind of weird because it's all these different masks together. It's not really storing color data; it's just storing four different pieces of individual. Uh, single channel information, but they're all stored together to be really efficient uh, as we talked about in the second episode So here you can see that it's set to masks no sRGB and You can see my resource size is uh, 5461 kilobytes or just over 5 megabytes whereas my diffuse texture they're both 2k here 2k, but my diffuse texture you can see it's it's about half of what my mask texture is. And the reason for that is it's, it's a four channel texture that's using DXT5 for the compression, which means um, it's double in size. So half of the data is going for the RGB and then the other half is going for the alpha channel. And what that means is the alpha channel is the least compressed of all of the data. So if I have some data that's really important that it not receive compression artifacts, I should probably store that in the alpha channel as opposed to the red, green, or the blue. Now in this case, my roughness, I know that my roughness is the most important uh, information out of the four maps that I'm storing here. So I put that in the alpha channel. Um, the other thing here is it says no sRGB. And you can come down here to this checkbox here that says sRGB. And what that means is uh, the data is being treated as linear. There's no uh, gamma correction or decorrection being applied here. Um, whenever you have a mask that's just a grayscale, that's a bit of grayscale information like roughness or ambient occlusion, those kinds of things, those need to be stored in linear space so you should always make sure that this srgb box is unchecked really the only time you need the srgb to be on is when you're doing a base color or diffuse texture when you're giving the shader information that's supposed to be uh, base color uh, color information about the surface 
you're going to use sRGB so that it uses uh, uh, so that it's stored in gamma space instead of in linear space or sRGB versus linear. All right, so we talked about our mask. So when I use a mask uh, and it's four channels, it's going to be double the size um, and it's going to be stored in linear. So no sRGB. And we talked about normal maps. So our normal maps are going to be DXT5. And they're also going to be double the size of a three channel DXT1 mask. Okay, next I have this cobblestones H1. This is my height map. And it's a very small texture. It's just 256 by 256. And I've set it to masks, no sRGB. So this is this is because it's just 256. It's really small, it's just 43K. But as I zoom in here, you can see that there are a lot of these really weird looking artifacts around the edges. And those are texture compression artifacts. So this data is kind of getting chewed up by texture compression. So there is an option that I can use um, if I wanna make this a little bit nicer. If I drop this down here, you can notice that I have this option called grayscale R8. And what that's going to do is if I just have a single channel of information like here where I just have a height map, I know that it's just an 8-bit single channel uh, texture, I can set my compression mode to grayscale R8. And now you can notice that uh, all of that artifacting is gone. What this is doing is this is scaling, this is storing a single channel uncompressed, which means it's the highest possible quality. Um, this data is uncompressed. And you can see that it went up to twice the size, but it's still really small uh, because my texture is just 256 by 256 and it's only a single channel. So if you have a single channel of data and the size, the, the dimensions of the texture are not very large, consider using grayscale R8 so that you can keep the quality high. This grayscale R8 works both with sRGB and non-sRGB textures. So if you have a grayscale that's, dis that's uh, determining the color of the object, you'll wanna check the sRGB box. But if it's determining data like height or ambient occlusion, you wanna make sure that sRGB is off. All right, let me take a look here and see if we missed any. We talked about DXT1, normal maps, mask, grayscale. Ah, here's another one. Here's alpha. And this is pretty much the same thing as grayscale, except for it's only using the alpha channel of your texture. And I know that that won't work in this case because there's nothing in my alpha channel. I haven't actually um, placed any data there, but this will basically only use the alpha channel and ignore what's in the red, green, and blue channels. And then there's one more setting that I want to use. I want to zoom in kind of close here to see if I can actually, uh, I don't know if this is going to work because there's so much noise. I wanted to see if you could tell the difference between DXT1 and BC7. So BC7 is a kind of a new texture format. Uh, it only works in DirectX 11 and higher, but it's, it's uh, a, a higher quality texture format, um, but a little bit larger size. So it works with both three channels and four channels, and it's always four to one compression. So if I pick BC7 here, let's see if you can, well, this isn't a very good example. You can't really tell the difference. Maybe we can see it on our, on our height map. Let's switch over here. If we set it to the default again, you can see it's all chewed up. But then if I pick BC7, the chewing upness clears up. Did you see that? So BC7 is what you want to pick. If you don't mind it being double the size of DXT1, um, but you need a little bit higher quality. So uh, just to kind of reiterate, DXT1 is eight to one texture compression and it's the best compression you can get, but there are compression artifacts. Um, so if you don't mind that, if you have a noisy texture like this one, for example, and you can't, you, you won't ever really see the artifacts. And so it's a great option for this kind of a texture. Um, 
So there's DXT1, normal mapping. You want to choose that for all of your normal maps because the values are tuned specifically for the normal map. Uh, then there's masks. Uh, if you have up to four channels of masks, um, masks cannot use the sRGB, and so you want to make sure that all of the data in all four of those channels are linear. If you just have one channel, and you don't mind it being a little bit larger and you need it to not be compressed, then you can use grayscale. And then finally, if you have three or four channels and you need them to be compressed, but also a good balance between quality and compression, then BC7 is a good option. So for this texture, I'm gonna use uh, DXT1. For this texture, I'm gonna use masks because it has four channels worth of mask data. For this texture, I'm going to use normal map. And for this texture, I'm either going to use BC7 or I'm going to use grayscale. Um, both of those will give me the same size results and pretty close to the same quality results. I do want to show you one more thing, and that is something that looks kind of funny in the shader. You notice that this says grayscale R8. It's basically sticking the grayscale image into the red channel in your shader. So if I come over here, notice that um, my image here shows up as red. And that's because there's only data in the red channel and the green, blue, and alpha channels are empty. And then also notice that I changed the, the format here to grayscale. But if I select my texture sampler here, my sampler type is set to masks. So you wanna be careful that when you're selecting texture formats, that your texture format that you've set in your texture matches the format that you've set in your sampler in your shader. So here, I need to come here and pick linear grayscale so that um, the sampler knows what kind of texture I'm actually sampling. So your texture format settings need to match your sampler type settings. Well, that's it for today's episode. I hope that you've seen that it's really important to balance um, the compression and uh, the quality settings of your textures so that you get uh, small textures in memory uh, that are as nice looking and as high quality as, as they need to be. And that there are different correct settings for different types of textures. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe. And if you have any questions about things, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out with those. Uh, good luck in creating shaders and see you next time.